ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாய்ராம் உபனிஷத் வாகினி சாப்டர் டூ ஈசாவாசிய உபனிஷத் த ஸ்ப்ரெட் ஆஃப் த வேதிக் விஸ்டம் த லார்ட் இன்டென்ட் ஆன் த ரீஜெனரேஷன் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட் கம்யூனிகேட்டட் வேதாஸ் த்ரூ ஹிரண்ய கர்பா who in turn passed them on to his 10 mental sons manasaputras including atri and marichi from them the vedas spread among humanity handed down from one generation to another as time passed and ages accumulated and continents moved some vedas got lost and were neglected as too difficult for comprehension and only four have survived into modern times these four were taught in the dwapara era yuga to his disciples by veda vyasa the greatest of the exponents of the vedas when vyasa was thus expounding the vedas engaged in spreading the sacred scripture one disciple of his Ajnavalkya by name incurred his wrath as punishment Ajnavalkya had to regurgitate the Ajur Veda which he had already learned into the custody of his guru leave the place and take refuge in the divine son Surya Deva the treasure house of the Vedas just then the sages who river river the vedas flew into the place in the shape of patrijas tirtri and eight of the reguri regurgitated yajur veda that particular section of the veda is called taitreya meanwhile the sun was pleased with the devotion and steady fought fastness of the unfortunate yajnavalkya he assumed the form of a horse vaji and blessed the sage with renewed knowledge of the ajurveda the version thus taught by the horse came to be called vajra sanya the ajurveda as promoted by veda vyasa is called krishna ajurveda that handed down by ajnavalkya shukla ajurveda krishna means black shukla white the first few sections the karma kandas of these vedas are mantras connected with ritual actions and the last few sections jnana kandas deal with spiritual wisdom renunciation is the pathway to liberation the isa vashya upanishad is concerned with the sections on spiritual wisdom jnana kanda since the opening mantra of this upanishad starts with the word isa vashya pervaded by the supreme the upanishad is called by that name all things of this world the transitory the evanescent or enveloped by the lord who is the true reality of each therefore they have to be used with uh, reverent renunciation and without uh, covetousness or greed for they belong to the lord and not to any one person this verse says that the universe is the immanence of the lord his form his body it is wrong to take the universe and its lord as different it is a delusion just a product of your own imagination just as your image under the water is not different from you the universe which is his image produced on your ignorance is the same as he as long as one has this delusion one cannot visualize the reality immanent within in fact one will slide into wrong thoughts words and deeds a piece of sandalwood produces a bad smell when kept in water but when taken out and rubbed into paste the former perfume will return when the authority of the vedas and scriptures is respected 
and when discrimination is sharpened on the practice of dharmic action the evil smell of wrong and wickedness will vanish and the pure innate perfume of the atma will emerge then the duality of doer and enjoyer will disappear and the stage will be reached that is called withdrawal from all activity sarva karma sanyasas in this upanishad this type of renunciation sanyasa is described as the pathway to liberation work without the desire for its fruits renunciation that involves the destruction of the three arjas for a mate for progeny and for wealth is very difficult to attain without the purity of the mind chitta in this upanishad the means of obtaining this renunciation is declared in the second mantra carry out the daily offering of milk to the god of fire etc prescribed in the scriptures believe that for liberation one has to be actively engaged in such work and become convinced that no sin can cling as long as one is so engaged work without the desire for its fruit slowly cleanses impurities like the crucible of the goldsmith the pure mind is spiritual wisdom jnana it is the consummation of detachment if you are able to divest yourself of desire when you are doing work no impurity can touch you you know that chilli ginji seeds when dropped into muddy water have the power to separate the dirt and deposit it at the bottom the seeds also sink to the bottom and sip out of the site in the same way those who are adepts in doing action karma without attachment have their minds perfectly clean and the result of their acts lose their effectiveness and sink to the bottom out of the 18 mantras in the upanishad only the first two deal directly with, with the problem of liberation and dissolution the other 16 elaborate on this solution and serve as commentaries thereon see the supreme self in all beings and all beings in the self the atma never undergoes modification it it is faster than the mind that is the mystery and the miracle it appears to experience all states but it has no growth decline or change though it is everywhere it is not pervisible by the senses it is because of this underlying existence and ever present immanence that all growth all activities all changes take place cause and effect and react on account of the basic stratum of the atmic reality why the very word lord isha carries this meaning the atma is near and far inside and outside still and moving he who knows this truth is worthy of the name spiritually wise person jnani the ignorant can never grasp the fact of atmic immanence those who are conscious can see things and feel their presence those who have lost awareness will search for the lost jewels even though they actually wear them at the moment though one may know all things one conceives the atma as existing in some unapproachable unreachable place on account of loss of consciousness but the wise person who is aware sees the atma in all beings and sees all beings as atma the wise person sees all beings as the same and perceives no distinction or difference so the wise person saves themselves for duality isa vashya upanishad makes this great truth clear to all wise people who have tasted that vision will not be agitated by the blows of fortune or the enticement of senses they see all beings as themselves having their own innate identity they are free from bondage from dharma and lack of dharma adharma and from the needs and urges of the body they are 
self eliminating swayam prakasha so the individual body jeeva roopa is not their genuine form no not even the grass and the subtle bodies are their forms that is why the first mantra of the isa vashya expounds on intentness on acquiring spiritual wisdom jnana nishta characterized by the absence of craving of any sort this is the primary goal of the vedas but those who have cravings will find it difficult to get stabilized in that state of mind nishta for such the second mantra prescribes a secondary means ritual action karma nishta the rest of the mantra celebrate elaborate and support these two states based on spiritual wisdom and action ritual action as desire and delusion as the cardinal urges interest intentness on the cultivation of spiritual wisdom as discrimination vairagya the conviction that the world is not atma that is to say not truth so it is profitless to have any dealings with it such an attitude of discrimination is the gateway to acquiring spiritual wisdom from the third to the eighth mantra the real nature of the atma is depicted through the condemnation of ignorance avidya which prevents understanding atma renunciation leads to self realization thus the isha vashya teaches the lesson of renunciation through the first mantra and the lesson of liberating activity through action divide of attachment and anger raga and dvesha in the second mantra in the fourth and fifth mantras it speaks of the atmic principle atma tatva and later of the fruits of the knowledge of that atmic principle in the ninth mantra the path of progressive elaboration karma mukti is laid down this path is useful for those who are too weak to follow the path of total renunciation but who are adepts in acts that are conducive to moral development and inner purification this path coordinates all action on the principle of contemplative worship those who are engaged in acts that are contrary to spiritual knowledge vidya are full of ignorance it says those who can confine themselves to the study and practice of divine forms or even worse for their desire is for powers and skills knowledge leads, leads to the world of the gods deva loka while actions leads to the world of the fathers pitru loka it is said so the spiritual wisdom jnana that results in self realization atma sakshatkara is something quite distinct from these no attempt to coordinate the two can succeed to escape the cycle of birth death contemplate on divinity of course one should not engage in anything opposed to the scriptures and in the ultimate analysis all actions are classified classified as ignorance avidya at best action karma can help only to cleanse the mind and contemplative worship can help only to achieve single mindedness worship has to rise to the level of contemplation of the cosmic divinity the hiranyagarbha it has to ripen and develop into liberation which while alive jeevan mukti before end of this life knowledge of gods devata jnana and spiritual actions have to be con- complementary and coordinated then one can escape the round of birth and death and become divine jai sai ram